7.2 is the fundamental theorem of calculus, and that's on pages 368 to 371 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of indefinite and definite integration by site and by substitution as used in the fundamental theorem of calculus. Lesson objectives, number one, to learn what the fundamental theorem of calculus is, and number two, to learn how to use definite integration to find the area under a curve. As mentioned in previous classes, the antiderivative is the equation to find the area under the curve of a function. So for example, if f of x equals x squared, then the area under the curve of x squared can be described with the equation 1 third x cubed, and that's just the antiderivative of x squared. So if we were to graph that, if this is x squared, just a normal parabola, then the area underneath the curve, which just means in between the curve and the x-axis, is actually given by the equation 1 third x cubed, so depending on what your x value is. So the fundamental theorem of calculus now comes into play, and it says if f is continuous on the interval from a to b, so this is like a parabola is a continuous function from an interval a to b, then the integral, now we are going to throw in some numbers here, from a to b of f of x dx equals f of b minus f of a, where capital F is the antiderivative of f. So all that's saying is that if we were going to find the area under the graph from say x equals 1 to x equals 3, we would be writing it like this, the integral from 3 to 1 of x squared dx would then be equal to the antiderivative, which we said is a third. Now, they plug in the, the value for b here, so that would be a value of 3. 3 cubed minus 1 third 1 cubed. And then you can find out exactly what that area is um, just by evaluating these, uh, this expression right here. Example, evaluate the following definite integral. And so we have the interval from 2 to negative 1 of the integral of x cubed. So the reason it's called a definite integral is because we have two endpoints to it. So first off, we need to know what the integral of x cubed is. And the integral of x cubed is 1 quarter x to the fourth. Now you're going to see things written this way as well. Um, after we've written 1 quarter x to the fourth, to remind ourselves that we're going to plug in a 2 and a negative 1, we put a vertical line and the 2 and the negative 1. So the fundamental theorem of calculus says that we plug in the greater number and then we subtract whatever we get when we plug in the smaller of the numbers. Now we just have to evaluate this thing. Technically this will be the area under the graph of x cubed from 2 to negative 1. So we get a quarter times 2 to the power of 4 which is 16 and we get a quarter negative 1 to the power of 4 is just positive 1. So we get 16 quarters minus 1 quarter, we end up with 15 quarters. Now since we're talking about an area, because that's what an integral is, and we didn't really have units, a lot of times you're going to see units squared. They'll just put a u there for units squared. So in summary, when taking the antiderivative of a function, you're finding the area under the function. And we're given two values as starting at an endpoint for your integral, we're talking about definite integration. And that is the same thing as the fundamental theorem of calculus, which states if f is continuous on the interval from a to b, notice that the interval has square brackets, so it has to equal a and b. Then the integral from b a to b of f of x dx is equal to f of b minus f of a, where capital F is the antiderivative of f. So your assignment is on page 370. You could do questions 1 to 9, 18, 19, 29, and 32 to 34. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.